stages of sleep. Ever have it where you're in class and you're like this? Right? We all know that. Or worse, you're driving in a car, right? That sort of tragic aspect of it. But this idea that you're sort of beginning to lose it and you go, this is the beginning of stage one sleep. We're going to talk about the four stages of sleep. Stage one, stage two, stage three, and REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep. Stage one is, you could be lying in bed, of course, which is the more classic environment in which to have it, but of course, you may find it happening in the library, you may find it happening in, at home while you're trying to study, you may find it happening with friends, you may find it happening wherever. But you're lying in bed, as the classic example, and you're just sort of beginning to sort of daydream. And the beta activity, this sort of quick, rapid 15 to 20 cycles per second of brain wave that predominates, begins to shift to alpha. So there's this slowing down of the brain activity. And we move into stage one sleep. During stage one sleep, that can last anywhere from a minute to 10 minutes. It's just a short little period of time that it begins the sleep cycle. The heart rate slows down, the body temperature drops. And we begin to move into sleep. Now at that moment, you could be woken up and say, oh, I wasn't sleeping. Even though the brain web activity suggests there is this change, oftentimes it's sort of just the very, very beginning. But it begins this descent into what we know to be sleep. Now after about 10 minutes, say on the outside, we then move into stage two sleep. Stage two sleep is the predominant deep cycle. So during the course of the night, we will spend most of your time, we all spend most of our time in stage two sleep. During stage two sleep, Something interesting happens. The thalamus, the part of the brain, begins to also sort of fade out. The thalamus is the part of the brain that when you see things, when you hear things, when you take in almost everything through your senses except the olfactory sense, it's the relay that decides where it should go in the brain. So its functioning is very important for alertness, for being aware of what's going on, and for making certain types of perceptual decisions. It goes to sleep along with a part of the frontal cortex that's also very much involved with intellectual decision making, executive functioning, etc. So as we move into stage two sleep, we begin to tone down this alert part of us. It begins to get a rest. And so when we come out of stage two sleep, and this gets into the relevance of napping and what it is that the benefits can be, getting a little stage two sleep, or what happens when we do stage two sleep on our way to stage three sleep, we give that part of our brain that's involved in keeping alert, keeping on top of things, a little bit of a rest, so it comes back refreshed. And so we come out of stage two sleep with the benefits being alertness, an increased concentration, etc. Now, from stage two, we move into stage three. Stage three sleep is this deep sleep. We go to delta waves. Delta waves are slow, one half to two cycles per second waves, and it's very, Deep, very deep. The cortisol drops. There's no real stress going on. We're shutting out what's going on outside. We're really not aware of the sounds and the things that are taking place. It takes really like the child screaming a parent's name or something that really has an evolutionarily probably adaptive reason to wake up. Most things will not. Hearing a child shout somebody else's name or another child's voice doesn't wake up a parent. It's hearing their own. So it's an interesting thing in terms of what is still alert. But by and large, you're completely out of it. This is where, because the cortisol is sort of out of the picture, the stress hormones have hormones out of the picture, the um, growth hormone is popping up. This is the stage of sleep where we have the restoration. We have the repair. If you've been doing a lot of hard work on your body, Lots of coffee, maybe lots of stimulants, maybe smoking, maybe just wearing yourself down by staying up and just driving it harder and harder, or just the normal stuff of living in a world that's filled with toxins and all the stuff that we're surrounded with just as a matter of course of living, the reparation begins to take place in that regard. That's uh, stage three, also known as slow wave sleep, also known as deep sleep. And then from there, from three, we move to REM sleep. REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep. When REM sleep takes place, it's known as paradoxical, paradoxical sleeping, because the beta wave activity is back in action. It's not unlike what it looks like when you're awake, except that it's this dream state. But something very interesting happens during REM sleep. This is where we think that short-term memory and what we're holding in short-term memory, like what you're studying, 
that you want to have converted into long-term memory so that it's there for your exam or whatever the case may be takes place. That REM sleep is very important for that transition of material from short-term memory to long-term memory, as well as the retention and the organization and the reorganization of the material that we're learning. So one important lesson to take from this little discussion of the different stages of sleep that we have are that they have different functions. Stage one sort of just readies us, sort of begins to slow things down. Stage two, where we spend most of our time, has this toning down, the always attending, so that when we come out of it, we're more refreshed, we're more alert. Stage three is this deep, 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 restorative uh, time of sleep. And then finally, REM sleep is this sort of opportunity for consolidation of memory and also the dreaming. And we still don't know why we dream, but there may certainly be some very important aspects to that. What happens is, is we cycle through this all night long. It takes about 90 to 100 minutes, hour and a half or so, to cycle from stage one through REM. And then once we do stage one once, we don't do it again. During the course of a, of a night, and a nap for that matter, we're going through these repeatedly. So we have these multiple opportunities. First it's REM for a little bit, then the next time we come around to REM again, it's a little bit more, then we come around again a little bit more. We might have five periods of REM sleep that increases over the course of the night that we're sleeping. And each one of those carries with it an opportunity for something to happen. Same thing with the deep stage three sleep. Something's happening in terms of the restoration and the repair in our body as we go through it.